Hello to all Earth citizens and welcome to my Conscious Coaching Podcast. This is Dr. Kianush, founder and creative director of MCCG. My Conscious Coaching Group is a non-political, non-religious 501c3 coaching nonprofit with initiatives in healthcare, leadership, and education with focus on emotional and spiritual intelligence. Our vision is to raise self and global awareness for a conscious mind through education and application of EQ and SQ, and our mission is to connect, collaborate, and partner with hospitals, academics, colleges, and medical schools and organizations to embrace growth, self-healing, and self-coaching to achieve well-being and peak performance of individuals and the team as a one connected whole. Our special guest today is the lovely Karen Newell, co-author of Living in a Mindful Universe and co-founder of Sacred Acoustic Meditation. Karen Newell is not only an author, but also a specialist in personal development with a diverse body of work that rests upon the foundation of heart-centered consciousness. As an innovator in the emerging field of brainwave entertainment audio meditation, Karen empowers others in their journeys of self discovery, and self-fulfillment by demonstrating how to connect to inner guide, to inner guidance, and achieve inspiration, improve wellness, and develop intuition, and make choices aligned with one's soul calling. She cultivated a personal knowing, not only of the reality of the spiritual realm, but also a facile expertise in living of a life of daily connection with universal consciousness. Her forays into consciousness involved listening to sounds such as gongs, crystal balls, and tuning forks. Recordings containing binaural beats were particularly effective at minimizing dis- distracting thoughts and restlessness, allowing one to finally reach the expanded states of awareness. Hello and welcome, Karen, to MCCG Podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm so thrilled and, you know, happy that you are here to share, you know, your love, you know, and, and expertise with us. And please let us know that what else do you like the world to know about you? I mean, personally and also professionally about your work. Well, I, I'm just a seeker. I've been a seeker of truth since I was a very young person. And my desire is really to learn how the universe works and what is my place within it. You know, all of those questions we have, why am I here? What is my purpose? I've had those questions and been trying to find the answers since I was a young child. And so I've learned the uh, benefits of understanding that we are more than our physical bodies. And once we can kind of make that understanding, we start to learn a lot more about ourselves. And that is where I eventually came to learn much more about why I am here and what is our purpose. And so this can happen for all of us just by, uh, you know, starting practices to get to know who you truly are. Yeah, exactly. We all have a point of a start, the point that we know that the shift happens there. For me, it was a sharp point that happened with my NDE experience, my near-death experience. Can you tell us what brought you to this work? Do you have, a, I mean, the clear cut point or it happened gradually, any incident, you know, that uh, predisposed you to this work? Yeah, for me, it did happen gradually. I I happened to be someone who grew up in a conservative Christian family. However, that belief system was not uh, put on me. I was allowed to find my own way. And so I had an incredibly open mind as I went out into the world. And uh, even when I would question certain things about religion, I was told, you'll find out for yourself. And so I think I was very fortunate that I could start out my life with sort of this very open mind to what are the realities of our world. And so at first I was just reading, I was doing a lot of reading about different uh, alternative spirituality to the Western traditions and uh, even some esoteric kind of information. And uh, this led me to realize that reading about these things isn't enough. I had to generate firsthand experience. And so I made a very uh, conscious decision that I wanted to learn more about this uh, meditation. And so around the time I was uh, wondering about meditation is when all of the research was coming out uh, from, I think, a university in the Midwest 
who were studying all of the uh, monks from Tibet. Uh, I think it was the Dalai Lama who sort of motivated this study. And I learned through that study how much uh, we can improve our physical bodies just by meditating. So, you know, any type of meditation can help us reduce stress. We can increase our immunity. And those, those values really spoke to me. And another part that really motivated me to meditate was this idea that you could develop certain abilities like telepathy, precognition, out-of-body experience, lucid dreaming. I had been reading about all of these kind of exotic states of consciousness. And as I was reading, I was learning that all of us have the ability to learn these things. And so it was a combination of practical uh, information about better health through meditation and this more exotic kind of interest in getting to know how can I become telepathic? Is it really true that we can all learn how to uh, kind of tune into what other people are thinking? And over time, I found, yes, absolutely. These abilities are available to all of us. And so it really was those interests that got me into this work. And of course, it was when I met Dr. Eben Alexander that I got even deeper into this work because of his near-death experience. He was very focused on the afterlife and uh, how what happens uh, when we die serves to inform us on our lives here and now. Because if we know our souls actually uh, continue to exist with the death of the physical body, that kind of changes how we might address our lives here and now, knowing that our awareness will actually continue and not end. And this isn't just a religious belief. Uh, this has been shown scientifically through, I'm pretty sure Dr. Alexander explained a lot of that to you in your interview. So I'm not going to repeat his information, but science supports the reality of soul. And interestingly, the soul, the existence of the soul, this is something that I found to be one of those universal truths when I was uh, reading about all the different spiritual traditions. The thing that I focused on is what were they all saying the same as opposed to what were the differences? And one of those things that they're all saying is that we all have a soul. And so getting to know my soul was really a big part of the motivation of learning how to meditate. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I, I'm very a soulful person too. So just, uh, for me, just the, the, the term of the soul was happened to me, uh, happened to me when I had my auto body experience, you know, as a little girl, like five probably years old or something like that. I wrote it in my chapter book that when I had my auto body experience and I met myself from the corner of the ceiling, I was just wondering that if I'm the one that this person is, who's the one that is sleeping down there, you know, on the bed. So, right. and, I, and I knew that my, I am something else except my body at that moment, even as a child. And so then, this, this is, excuse me, this is precisely why generating firsthand personal experience is key because you had that experience more spontaneously, but look how it changed how you looked at the world. Those of us who haven't had them happen spontaneously, we can generate these kinds of experiences and find out for ourselves, like looking down at your body, how amazing as a child, excuse me, now you can go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, I understand. I, yeah. I exactly I agree with you that I mean, going through the path and I had afterward my near death experience and a shared that experience when my father passed. And these are all made sense to me, you know, after many, many years. So it didn't make sense to me right at that age. But gradually, when I grow up, you know, I just found out that, as you mentioned, I'm seeking for something else. And uh, the seeker of the truth and your curiosity, I think that's an element that is in everybody. And uh, if we follow that, we are going to reach to our soul's calling, which also is the mission and then the vision of your work, too. We talk, Karen, a lot about the meditation and also the mindfulness. So can you tell us that uh, what exactly the, the, the definition of meditation and how does mindfulness and meditation are related together? Well, they are related. I would say that mindfulness is really a, an ongoing practice of really focusing on what you're doing in every moment. So you bring that mindfulness into your daily activities, whereas meditation is more a time that you set aside as a practice where you practice 
staying focused, where you practice keeping your mind centered on one particular concept, idea, image, whatever it would be, uh, your breath, a Mm -hmm. mantra, Mm -hmm. so that you can really become very practiced in being mindful in your daily life. And so meditation really serves as a uh, sort of a, a, a tool in learning how to be mindful, but meditation can also take you much, much deeper into that soul that we're talking about. And so some would say that meditation, there's so many different kinds. So some would say that meditation is really finding that, whereas mindfulness is focusing on that thing you're doing in the moment, meditation is focused on no thing. But some people, uh, you know, do focus on something while they're meditating. So that can be very confusing. But uh, I find that when I meditate and find that quiet space inside, I really feel like I'm in a now moment of existence. And I have access to I would I call it that inner observer or a more neutral part of myself. And so the more I practice kind of staying focused from that inner observer perspective or that soul perspective, we could say, that helps us in our daily life, say, when we have an um, emotional reaction about something, that inner observer, at least for me now, kind of kicks in and uh, lets me know, gosh, you're, you're really emotionally responding here. You know, I kind of have this dual awareness of what's going on, the part of me that's responding and the part of me that is attempting to more manage the situation in a, in a more efficient way. And so all of us can kind of develop this dual awareness in meditation. But meditation also can take you very deep, as I said, into your soul's awareness such that you can, in a meditative state, pose questions to your inner self. And uh, maybe find out why am I here? What is my purpose? Maybe find out, you know, things that uh, might be useful in your life as you move forward. And so that's how I would kind of distinguish mindfulness and meditation. And mindfulness is something that uh, the more I meditate, the more I find myself naturally being mindful. So when I'm out shopping in the world and I'm interacting with folks, I'm very focused on what I'm doing and what people I'm interacting with. I'm not just going around, you know, without that self-awareness. And so they kind of work hand in hand. However, one does not necessarily require the other, uh, but they are very beneficial. I yeah. see. I see. Yeah, I understand. It clicks now. So we can meditate, we can be mindful, and they can come together, as we, we mentioned, the mindfulness meditation. And uh, this is a great combo for everyone. And I completely agree with you. For me, meditation is also the, the time that I have my inspiration too. And uh, these are the time that I'm more connected, you know, with the experience that I had to the other side to receive, you know, uh, the, the knowing, as you mentioned for my calling and what is next and how should I and can uh, follow the dots you know to find my path and unfold you know in the in the in the vision that I have to move forward and uh, you do a different kind of meditation and I just want to know what's the difference of the sacred acoustic meditation and the traditional kind of meditation and why they are effective yes well I do all kinds of meditations and I did start with that traditional way because That's how I learned it was done, where you just sit quietly, you focus on your breath. And I thought, wow, this is really boring (laughs) when I would sit and do this, because all that would happen for me is I would just have all of these thoughts racing through my mind as much as I would focus on my breath or a phrase, a mantra or anything. I couldn't get that little voice to quiet down. Mm -hmm. And so I began to think, that I was just someone who wasn't capable of meditating. And of course, that belief was self-defeating. And so at some point, I had to tell myself, no, I really am capable of meditating, but maybe not in the same pathway that these other teachers are teaching. And so what I learned about was particular types of sound that really helped to quiet my mind. And at first, that was things like brass bowls or crystal bowls, Uh, tuning forks or gongs. And these all make a similar kind of monotonous sound with a little bit of a waver. And it's that waver that is really kind of captures the mind and helps to really find uh, that 
that focus that I was really seeking. I wasn't able to find just myself. And so by using these kinds of sounds, it really helped me. I call them training wheels, really. Not that we need to become dependent on them, but uh, these particular sounds are actually known as binaural beats. When you analyze what the sound that's coming out of a crystal bowl, uh, there's a natural binaural beat that's being emitted. And a binaural beat that's created digitally, which is what my company, Sacred Acoustics, produces, you basically put one frequency in one ear, a slightly different frequency in the other ear. That's where the phrase binaural comes in, two different frequencies in each ear. That then creates this wavering sound, sort of a wah, 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 regular sound. And this is what really helped me to get into meditative states. Now, at first, when I would listen to these recordings, I would fall asleep because they're designed to keep you in a state between awake and asleep where the body is profoundly relaxed, but the mind is still alert and aware. And again, at first, my body would just, my mind would just fall asleep right along with my body, but I practiced. And the more that I practiced, the more I could find myself hovering between that profoundly relaxed space of sleep and the uh, mind still being aware. And this is when I realized what meditative states really were. And they really served to help me get into these states such that now, all these many years later, I can reach these states without the sound simply because I recognize that subtle shift in consciousness and what it feels like and how to get there. And so these sounds can really help. I like to say the Western mind, because Western minds, we are so used to thinking and doing, and it can really help to shift our awareness to more of a being state, just being present with our energy with our consciousness with our soul and the sound can really help us get there and uh, we feed people in these recordings these sacred acoustics recordings varying levels of delta theta and alpha states of awareness and delta is associated with sleep theta is associated with meditation alpha and creativity and lots of other you know kind of stuff that's the hypnagogic state alpha is more of a uh gentle focus state, which is one step down from beta, the state that we're in when we're walking around and we're talking. That's the state that's so challenging to quiet down when you're in a meditative state. And so using some type of tool can help us get there more quickly. And I know for me, it it was a shortcut, but it didn't mean I was shortcutting my personal development and growth. I was still able to find uh ways to meditate even without the sound, but the sound was an incredibly useful tool in getting me to even recognize what these states are supposed to feel like. And I know that in Tibet, uh, we're, we're told that it takes 10,000 hours of meditative practice to reach these kind of states. And I have to say that people who are, you know, not full-time monks, don't have that kind of time. And so having these tools is very, very helpful in helping us kind of catch up to uh, those benefits of meditation. Yeah, I understand. And I like the term that you mentioned, the full-time monk, you know, especially in the busy worlds that we are living and, you know, and especially for me that work mostly in the coaching with the healthcare systems and we know how busy are the physicians. They rarely have time for themselves and set aside for meditation only. And this can be a breakthrough for them. So how long they should, they should do these binaural bits? How long does it take? Well, we recommend the same as uh, other meditation practices, such as transcendental meditation, of at least 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know lots of people like to do a quicker meditation, and that's okay. But just know that you're not able to get into as deep of states in just five minutes. Mm -hmm. And actually, we recommend to get into the deepest states at least 40 minutes. But 20, 20 is a nice middle of the road for folks who are trying to work a, a, you know, regular practice into their routine. And then maybe occasionally they could do a longer version when they have the time. 
I see. I understand. I mean, the songs are really important. I mean, I I, I knew I knew that even before I hear about your work, especially because of the music. You know that I I use the music for my coaching work, and there are different between the different kind of music. At uh, the 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 rhythm, the beats, as you mentioned, in different songs is changing for me. The different kind of state of being, and that's really relaying for me the same. You know, experience that you. You probably are talking about the binaural bits, you know, that creating the, the easier way of uh, going to that state of being. And meditation, as you mentioned, is not easy for everyone and people have their different version of it. So uh, for me, the meditation to go away of meditation is just being in a nature and listening to birds, maybe, and just being in a nature and just uh, take a couple of, you know, deep breath and inhale and exhale. But definitely a music a sound and uh, if, if you have you know the opportunity of using the binaural beats is helping as well and Karen do you, is there any studies that in the mental or physical health communi- communities that shows that using this meditation are effective and what are the results of those Yes, we did do a pilot study. We were fortunate that a psychiatrist in New York City, Dr. Anna Yusum, decided to do a study where she prescribed our recordings, these sacred acoustics recordings to patients in her practice. And so what she did was to measure, she decided to measure uh, anxiety. And that is because there's an incredibly helpful tool in the psychiatric research field called the state trait anxiety inventory. And it's been validated over many years. And so she had her patients fill out this form before they started listening to the recordings of their, of their state and their trait anxiety levels. So their state anxiety is maybe a certain situations will make them anxious. Their trait anxiety is the anxiety that they kind of walk around in the world with. And uh, she prescribed these recordings. And after just two weeks of listening, at least two weeks of listening, people filled out the form again. And what she found is that there was a 26% reduction in anxiety over that two-week period, which to her as a psychiatrist was actually amazing because even medications sometimes don't work in that way, but what in that uh, quick of a fashion, but uh, she found that it was the trait anxiety that reduced more than the state anxiety, which again was rather remarkable because that means that people's anxiety in general was reducing so that they could then enter situations that made it much more easier for them to manage with less anxiety. And so she found also that these patients, uh, were resolving issues like longstanding issues that n- weren't necessarily uh, able to be quantified on a psychiatric form. And so she had people who had this one person had been in a toxic relationship for years. And after a short time of listening to these recordings, their energy shifted such that they were able to get out of that toxic relationship. She had a medical student in her practice who had a lot of anxiety just being a medical student. And this student found that she was getting better sleep. Thus, she was able to do better on her board exams. And she used some of the recordings to help her study for those board exams. And so she found very practical results. And the recordings included in this study are actually available to anyone. The study was published in the Journal of Nervous and Mental Disease in uh, March of 2020, as it happens, or it might've been February of 2020, right when the COVID pandemic shutdowns began. And so at that moment, I decided with these wonderful results of these recordings, we call it the whole mind bundle on our website, sacredacoustics.com. People can go get these recordings. I reduced the price to $19 for this set of nine recordings, but there's also a free option. So anyone with financial uncertainty can just choose the free option and you will gain access to these recordings. And I do this because I know that anyone who makes the attempt to reduce their anxiety, to quiet the mind, uh, that that helps all of us, not just the person who's receiving those benefits, but all the people around that person. And so this is just one way that I 
want to pay forward sort of uh, the benefits that I've received from these recordings. There should be no barrier to anyone who would like to try them. And uh, included with these recordings in the Whole Mind Bundle is a PDF guide that uh, includes all of the listening protocols, the same listening protocols that were provided to uh, Dr. Anna Yusum in her study. And so this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, resource that anyone can really use to start to help to manage their own mental health. And uh, there's other people using them to reduce pain, uh, to, uh, you know, address other mental health issues such as depression and so on. So really, we're all unique and we're all going to benefit in different ways. The best way to find out how you might benefit anyone who's listening is go try it out. And on our website, there's also a free download. Look for the free download link. And if you enter your email, we'll send you a free 20 minute. It's an ALM recording, but this 20 minute recording can become part of your daily routine. And so along with those other recordings included with the whole mind bundle. So this is a uh, very exciting that we're able to show this in clinical settings that these benefits are real. Thank you so much, Karen. I was about to ask you, is there any way that the people can experience that for free that you got ahead of me and then just, you know, shared all your gems, you know, that uh, how our listeners and our, our network can find on your website to experience that to see if it's working for them. And I'm sure it does. And we all know that anxiety, you know, with the work of emotional intelligence that I'm doing is a kind of information like all our emotions. It is just too much of something or too little of something that we have no idea of. Of it and doing the meditation and or binaural beat meditation help us to get to that state of being and awareness of understanding what is that data and information that our emotions are giving it to us and uh, I hope our listener take advantage of you know all the, uh, the free assets that you are offering on your website too just getting to our to the, the end and my favorite part you know of your book the, that you have been a co-author of, of the living in a mindful universe with Evan Alexander, which is also your life partner. And uh, what is your view and remedies of living in a mindful universe? Well, I think it's really important for us to understand how our consciousness, and what I mean by that is our beliefs, our dreams, our hopes, our you know plans, all of that, our emotions, our thoughts, all of that is our consciousness. And it's important to understand that our consciousness is actually playing a role in our unfolding reality around us. So the more that we can become more mindful of what's residing in our consciousness, the better all of our lives will become. And some of that, some of what we find, I know I did when I started to become quiet inside, the first thing I found was emotions that I hadn't properly processed in the past. And I wasn't someone who on the outside had a lot of mental health problems or things like that, but not processing emotions properly, I learned affects us for a lifetime. Uh, you know, it affects how we encounter others in our relationships, how we move forward in our lives. And so really being more mindful is about finding out what is inside of me, what can be released that's no longer serving me. And what can I sort of create in my own consciousness to bring more of what I do want in my life into this world. And we haven't mentioned the heart, but part of living in a mindful universe for me is being very aware of what is in your heart. And that's those emotions. And so, you know, the Heart Math Institute is another big inspiration of mine. And they talk about how when you generate feelings of gratitude in your heart, you're actually becoming mo more coherent. And whatever feelings you have in your heart, they're actually affecting the people around you without having to say a word. And so living in a mindful universe, to me, is being aware that we're living in a heartful universe. And uh, this can really help us to have more empathy and compassion for others around us, to really understand that we're all on our own journeys and that really respect for all other souls and what they're going through is really part of living in a mindful universe because we are all a part of this consciousness. Eben and I often say, no soul left behind. 
All of us are part of this universe, this mindful universe. And so being more aware of it can certainly bring more benefits to our daily lives. Thank you so much, Karen, for bringing us home. And, and I'm also the fan of, you know, Heart Mat. I'm a Heart Mat certified also. And uh, the way that be- you beautifully put it in the heartful universe. So I think that's the uh, very good space that we end our conversation that we are looking to live in a mindful, heartful universe. And that's the dream and vision of all of us. And uh, uh, just to, I mean, repeat what you and Eben just always says and I had with my experience, we all are one soul and we all are soul particles and there is one consciousness and we all rejoin in that. And getting, I mean, at the end, I just want to ask you again. So and I appreciate that you shared your love and expertise with us and our network and listeners, uh, except your website. Is there anything else that you like our audience know to know about your work and how they can find more, more of, I mean, your uh, work and or share, you know, their ideas or contact or communicate with you? Sure. You can always reach me at sacredacoustics.com. The contact forms come right to me. And that's where you can ask any questions that maybe aren't clear, maybe questions about which recordings you might like to start with. There's many to choose from. And you can also uh, find me and Eben Alexander at innersanctumcenter.com. And there is where there's an archive of two and a half years of interviews Eben and I did with many of our colleagues throughout the pandemic and also a membership platform where people can join and interact with us more directly on a regular basis. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. And we, of course, we are going to meet together at uh, IANS International Conference you know, in uh, Labor Day weekend. And if you are living in Washington, D.C. area, so please join us. So and we meet Karen and Eben Alexander and me in person. And have a nice, wonderful day, everyone. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Goodbye to our listeners. And remember, one podcast at a time. Thank you for being with us for another one. You can visit our website at myconscious.org to learn more about us or write to us at coach at myconscious.org. And please stay connected by following us on our social media platforms, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, not to miss our upcoming episodes and events. Love and light from all of us to you. Make it a great day, everyone.